of praise for that. Are you thankful that the window of heaven has been open in your life? Hallelujah. Took the old tattered garments, took the old rags, uh, took the rags that were filthy, uh, filthy and filthy and sin, and he gave me a brand new garment. Amen. Washed my soul in the blood of Jesus. Uh, wrote my name in the book. Uh, and because of that, uh, I have experienced the joy of the Lord. Amen. Give him another hand clap of praise for who he is tonight. of the King clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice let all the earth rejoice he wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. And how great The lamb, the lion and the lamb. How great, how 
Clap of praise in the house of the Lord for that. Amen. Aren't you glad you serve a great God tonight? Hallelujah. One that cares for you. One that loves you. One that made a way where you can have salvation. Amen. Oh, he is great and worthy to be praised. Give him another hand clap of praise for who he is tonight. Oh, I believe he's in the house tonight. Amen. He is great and worthy of all of the praise and all of the honor that we'd ever to think about to give him tonight. Amen. Choir, come on up at this time. Let's continue to worship together in song tonight. Case number 10, if you need it in that red back book, simply says the meeting in the air. Let's sing it together tonight. Page number 10.
tonight with us, page number 268. 268 says, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I'm glad I'm working for Jesus tonight. Amen. Glad that he is the one in charge. Glad that I signed up with him and said, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Amen. I laid down my, my flag, laid down my desires and took up the cross. Amen. Let's sing it together tonight.
Hallelujah. Are you glad you're on the battlefield for Jesus tonight? Amen. Amen. What a joy it is to see you in the house of the Lord. Trust that you've had a good afternoon and I was able to share the love of Jesus with somebody. And just want to take a few moments to remind you about after service tonight. We're headed down to crash the Wendy's in Okoe. Amen. And um, I think they know we're coming. And uh, we'll be there after service tonight and uh, fellowship with you around the table. So uh, it's open to everybody. Now, if you don't have any money, borrow it from Pastor Ricky. He's the newest guy on staff. And uh, you can borrow it from him. Uh, matter of fact, if you sweet taught him real good, he might just pay for it. And uh, just say, I'll pay you later. And you know what that means. Amen. Want to see you down there after service tonight. Any first-time guests tonight? I know we're still transitioning congregations together, but we're delighted to have all of our first-time guests. Make this individual, this young lady in the back, feel welcome. And, and uh, our GWC folks and our Okoy folks and our Sunday night folks and our SLC folks. I mean, we just roll them all together on Sunday night. What a joy it is to be with you in the house of the Lord. And I trust that you've had a good day, as I said already. Let me uh, make just a quick moment, uh, take a quick moment and make a mention of an announcement that's in your bulletin. I didn't do it this morning and I uh, wanted to do it tonight. But if you are not getting our weekly calls that go, I mean, how, how many of you wait for pastor to call every week? Now, don't lie, okay? Some of you I know. You say, Pastor, you didn't call me last night. Or I've heard some folks say, well, Pastor's called. I can go to bed now, okay? <laughs> so, uh, But if you don't get our weekly call, and I say weekly, pretty much it's weekly, uh, from our church office, just uh, getting you ready for Saturday for Sunday morning, I send that out every Saturday night at about 7 o'clock. If you're not getting that, that means we don't have your number in our system. So if you simply want to take a piece of paper and you want to put your name and your phone number, just drop it in the offering plate. They'll know what all that means in the office and they'll load you up and if they'll get that done this week next Saturday you can get your personalized somewhat personalized call from the pastor amen and uh, we do that every single Saturday night we also use it in the event of an emergency or the home going of someone. You know how we use those things. So if you're not getting those um, and you want to get those, make sure that uh, you just drop your name and number in the offering bag and uh, we'll uh, make sure it gets put in the system correctly. Also, if you are tech savvy and you want to get text messages, now we don't send them uh, near as frequently as I'd like, but uh, if you want to get that, you have to sign up for that. And that's in your bulletin as well. You can text it uh, to the number that's listed there and it'll tell you, thank you for joining. If we ever do send out a text uh, you'll get that as well I try to do more voice calls so some of our folks are not tech savvy so if you want to uh, just sign up for that make sure that you do that and uh, we'll, we'll get that out to you just a way for us to connect with you and it's a it's a, a really inexpensive way and uh, puts us in touch with you we can get a message out real quick if we need to and I know with a lot of transition with the GWC congregation and newcomers to our own church and maybe I should mention it on a Sunday morning in case uh, some of those folks don't get it, but we want to make sure that we communicate with you. Don't forget about tonight. Don't forget about the events of this week. Don't forget about um, the fall festival. Let me go back to the events of this week. Pray for us on Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday is a is a uh, is a is a new event for us. Tuesday night. And uh, we'll be playing our first ever competitive girls volleyball game at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, traveling over to Groveland, taking our team of seven girls and going to play our, we have eight games to play the next four weeks. And our first one is Tuesday night. And uh, I'm going just to have fun. And if we come back with a win, great. And if we come back with uh, not a win, then we'll, uh, we'll still have fun through the whole process. And so going to be doing that on Tuesday. And uh, supposedly I've got a busload of people going with me. And so uh, some of our parents even today have said, Pastor, I'm going to be here in time where I can ride that bus with you over to watch the kids play on Tuesday. So uh, be praying for us Tuesday. There will be praise team practice as scheduled at 6 o'clock. Uh, but some of us will be away on the girls' volleyball uh, team. Um, I'm not a player, obviously, but I get to go drive the bus. Amen. So we'll be doing that Tuesday. And uh, be praying for our church. And, um, and if you're sitting close to somebody that you don't know, it's possible that they're a newcomer and you need to introduce. It, it would be great of you to take them to Wendy's tonight and buy their meal. Amen. Let me think on who I don't know. Let me think who doesn't know me. You could buy my meal tonight. So uh, just I got students raising their hands saying, Pastor, you can buy mine in the back. But um, uh, get to know those that are around you. And uh, if they're not here, when, when you see their absent, call them. Check on them. And let's make sure that we are part of the family of God. By, by means of sharing that with you, Sister Hazel is in need of our, our prayers tonight. 
She was out in, out of revival last week, which was very uncommon, and we got word that she was not well. And the office spoke to her on Friday afternoon, I believe it was, Thursday or Friday, and uh, she was having some more tests done. But we were notified this morning that she is in the hospital, and I spoke to her this afternoon, and she is at Florida South. So uh, having some tests done, some bone marrow stuff going on, and uh, kidney issues. So uh, she just asked that the church pray for her, and I told her that we would mention her in prayer, and we would have special prayer for her tonight and so we're going to do that here in just a moment that's sister hazel baldry uh, no stranger to this congregation and uh, again she's at florida south the big hospital in orlando and i just ask that you remember her while we're praying um, i'm going to ask that you remember our church this week as we are hoping to get our final approval in our buildings and I just need God's favor this week where we can announce to you Wednesday night that it's all done or maybe by the weekend. And uh, so just pray for our church and those that are still sick in their bodies. Some are out tonight because of sickness. Ask that you remember them as well. Can we just pray right where we're at? Ask God to move on these knees. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for the church, God. Thank you for the family of God that you've put together. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our midst, Lord. And I just ask that as we take time out of this service, God, to call upon you, that you'll move in Sister Hayes life. God, you know what she's facing. You know the discomfort, Lord. You know the tests that have been run. You know the outcome of them already, Lord. And I just pray that the healing hand of God will touch her. I just pray that, Lord, divine healing will be administered to her physical body. Lord, we believe it in faith today that by your stripes she was healed, Lord. And I ask that you'll prove yourself to her one more time. Lord, not only Sister Hazel's life, God, but continue to move in Brother Maynard's life. And Lord, touch Justin tonight and be with him, Lord. And touch James tonight and be with him in his body, Lord. And Father, I pray that you'll be with Sister Worth. Touch her and her body tonight. Father, I ask that you'll move, Lord. And those that are shut in, Lord, thank you for the good report of Sister Joyce. But Lord, continue to move in her life. Lord, those that are up in age and are not able, Lord, to come and go as they like, God, I pray that you'll comfort them. Be with them. Guide them into direct them. Thank you, Lord, for the many good things that you've done for us. And let us, Lord, be quick to praise you. Let us not soon forget the wondrous love of Jesus. Lord, and be thankful for what you've done in every aspect of our life. And we will forever be grateful for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. And Amen tonight. Ushers, would you come tonight give you an opportunity to worship with your giving? Thank you for how you responded to revival this past week and how you gave uh, uh, an offerings every night to take care of our evangelist and I trust that when he left here Saturday morning he was blessed by your token of love and appreciation and uh, we love Brother Jarman and he is preaching close to home this week and Brother Hanks is out preaching this week. Brother Carl has been out preaching last week in the, into some of this week and uh, it's just good to know there's people connected with this church out spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, so give tonight as giving to the Lord. Your offerings tonight go into our operating fund as we're embarking on this last quarter of 2014. It's hard to believe that we're in the last few days of another year, but we are. And somebody said we're 11, uh, 11 or so Fridays or something like that from Christmas. Now, I could care less about that. I I'm not ready for Christmas yet. It seems like we should still be uh, talking about Thanksgiving and uh, we'll get there in a few weeks but uh, make sure that you're faithful of the next few months as we close out this year and thank you this church is always supportive of everything that we do and as we get busy into the Christmas season we'll be adopting a kid at the youth ranch again and all those crazy things that we do to share the love of Jesus at Christmas so let's take care of our obligations where we can do that without having to, to worry about it and get all that handled away for this quarter let us pray Father we love love you tonight. Thank you for the privilege we have to give, Lord. It is a it is a, a, a an act of worship, Lord. It is bl a blessing to give back to the kingdom of God. You blessed us with so much, and Lord, tonight we want to give of a token of that, Lord. Our tithes is our tithes, and then above that, a token, a love offering, a, a gift, God, to say thank you for all that you've done for us, God. Those that are paying their tithes tonight, Lord, as they bring it to the storehouse, I pray you'll bless the remaining part. Let their family needs be met. Move in their homes and in their lives and take all of the tithes and offerings multiply them God that we can continue to move forward in this area of ministry that you placed upon our heart we will forever be grateful for it in the name of Jesus Christ we pray and everybody said amen
and amen. God bless you as you give tonight. our praise and worship and and uh as we have uh brother and sister faircloth come and uh, actually uh brother and sister walcott's gonna come first and then follow that with brother and sister faircloth so let's just continue to worship the lord Praise the Lord. If you happen to be in the house of God one more time, let's worship the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Amen. I walked a day along the country road, and there a stranger journeyed to bent low beneath the burden of his blood it was a cross a cross i knew take up the cross and follow me i hear the blessed savior call how can I make a lesser sacrifice when Jesus gave his all? I cried, Lord Jesus, and he spoke my name. I saw his hands all bruised and torn. I stooped to kiss away the marks of shame, the shame for me that he had borne. Take up the cross and follow me. I hear the blessed Savior call. How can I make a lesser sacrifice when Jesus gave it all? Who oh, let me bear the cross, dear Lord, I cried, and lo, a cross for me appeared. The one forgotten I had cast aside, the one so long that I have failed. Take up the 
cross and follow me. I hear my blessed Savior call. How can I make the lesser sacrifice when Jesus gave his all? My cross I'll carry till the crown appears. The way I journey soon will end. Where God himself shall wipe away all tears and friend hold fellowship with friends. Take up the cross and follow me. I hear the blessed Savior call. How can I make the lesser sacrifice when Jesus gave his all? Take up the cross and follow me. I hear the blessed Savior call. How can I make a lesser sacrifice when Jesus paid it all? He's God where the thunder rolls. He's God way up in heaven. He's God down in my soul. I know God is God. Oh, God don't ever change. I know God is God. And he always will be God. He's God in the Father. He's God in the Son. He's God in the Holy Ghost, the God, the three in one. I know God is God. Oh, God, don't never change. I know God is God. And he always will be God. He's God that healed my body, the God that saved my soul. He's going to be with the Holy Ghost. He's God, the great I am. I know God is God. Oh, God, don't ever change. I know God is God, and he always will be. Do that one again. He's the God of the Hebrew children, the God of Abraham, the God of the fiery furnace, the God, the great I am. I know God is God. Oh, God, don't ever change. I know God is God. And he always will be God. 
He's the God that healed my body. The God that saved my soul. He God that healed the Holy Ghost. The God that makes me whole. I know God is God. Oh, God don't ever change. I know God is God. And He always will be God. He's the God that gave us Jesus, the God that brought us out. He's the God that rules in heaven. He's the God that makes me shout. I know God is God. Oh, God don't ever change. I know God is God. And He always will be God. He's God in New York City. He's God in Tennessee. He's God in, in Okoy. He's God all over me. I know God is God. Oh, God don't ever change. I know God is God. And He always will be God. He's God on the platform. He's God back at the door. He's God in the aiming corner. He's God all over me. I know God is God. Oh, God don't ever change. I know God is God. And He always will be God. I know God in the heaven. He's God of the earth. He's God of the Bible. He's God of my new birth. I know God is God. Oh, God don't ever change. I know God is God. And He always will be God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. God is God. And he always will be God. If you love the Lord, say amen. amen. Are you glad he's still God on a Sunday night? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand with me for the reading of God's word. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. Good Sunday night crowd. Are you ready to receive what the Lord has for us tonight? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. What a joy it has been thus far to be in service with you tonight. 2 Timothy chapter number Three. While you're finding that, let me remind you that this coming Wednesday night, uh, this Wednesday night and possibly the next uh, one or two after that, Pastor Renfro will be uh, taking the main building, the main sanctuary class here, and some things that are on his heart. He mentioned, alluded to them this morning, and I'm going to encourage you that uh, if you're not in a Wednesday night church, you need to be. Can all the Wednesday night folks say amen? Amen. Amen. So we'll meet in here at 7 o'clock, take care of worship, and let the kids do their part. But somewhere around 7.30 or so, we'll dismiss all of them out. And Pastor Renfro will finish up in here the next couple of weeks. So make sure that you're here on, um, on Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, and let's worship the Lord together. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. Now I know you've been in a week of revival. Uh, I don't know if you noticed or not, but they scrolled the wrong PowerPoint for offering. Amen. They were saying we were in revival all again this week. No, Brother Jarman is not here that I'm aware of. And, uh, but uh, I know uh, that it's been a long week. Today's been a long day, but I'm going to try my best to preach. And if you'll listen fast, I'll try to get you out of here within an hour. Okay, that's no promises. Amen. Second Timothy chapter number 3. Know this also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Having a form. Everybody say the word form. Form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such. Turn away. Oh, we've read this scripture multiple times in the last six years. But the Lord will help me. I'm going to try to preach from it again tonight on this thought that we need to be careful. Because it seems that several are living casually. In times that I would consider are very critical. Right. Living casually in times that are critical. Let us pray. Father, we love you tonight. 
Thank you for the word of God. Thank you, Lord, for stirring my heart in revival this week. Lord, not only last Sunday morning with our bishop, but all week. And then this morning as Pastor Ricky shared from his heart, Lord, I was stirred again. Lord, and my heart's telling me I'm ready to go to heaven, Lord. I'm looking for the rapture, God. I love to preach about heaven tonight. But, Lord, I believe this afternoon you changed my thought. Lord, I left this campus today thinking it'll be heaven. It'll be rapture message tonight. But, Lord, this afternoon, as I was studying Lord I believe you quickened my spirit and Lord I, I thought about those that are not ready to meet you Lord and I want to warn them again tonight I want to encourage them to give it all to you Lord I want to ask them one more time to consider themselves being weighed in the balance Lord and let us not be living casually in a time that is critical help us tonight I pray and we will forever be grateful for it in the name of Jesus we ask and everybody said amen. amen and amen tonight. You may be seated again as you, as you, if you were listening while I was praying. I was hoping this afternoon and I left here I could preach about heaven, the rapture, going home. I said, Lord, I'm just so ready to go. But as I was in my office this afternoon, I just found myself uh, troubled one more time that there are folks among us that are living casually. Folks among us that are not taking the times that we're in serious. And I said, Lord, will you allow me to, to warn them again tonight? I found myself over in our text tonight reading all of those things uh, that we read in our text in that last part in verse number 5 where it says um, having a form of godliness uh, but denying the power thereof uh, from such uh, turn um, away and I say God one more time uh, would you let me go to the pulpit tonight and would you let me share with this congregation that it is important uh, that we do not get at ease uh, and Zion that it is important that we do not live too casual I know there are casual things happening around us there are even I'm not saying I'm for or against this but there are those churches that say oh just come as you are casual this and casual that and I'm, again I'm not here to debate that but I am here to say this is the house of the Lord and I choose to give it honor and respect and reverence and what he did for me on Calvary was not just a casual event but he gave his everything that you and I might have life and have it more abundantly I really that it should have been me on the cross it should have been you on the cross but he said I'll go and I'll pay the price and when I think about the goodness and when I think about what he's done I get stirred up in my heart because I say God let us not live too casual in a time that requires some critical situations since I have been in church tonight I have been notified maybe Maybe you will find this when you get home that they are suspecting a second, another case, I won't say second, another case of Ebola, not in Texas, in Boston. I said, God, it shows me again that we are living in critical times. It shows me again that there are things happening that I know not of. And I said, God, where is, our, what is our what is our responsibility as a, as a church and as a organization and as those that are supposed to be called a court? Lord, what is it? I'm reminded that even this past week we went through a series of meetings that we called revival and it seemed everywhere we turned there was things happening. People calling saying this is going on in my life and that is going on in my life and I won't be there here and I won't be here for that and I say God I realize the responsibility of families are heavy I realize the responsibility of those things happening around us are overwhelming but Lord don't let me get casual in my living don't let me get casual in my discipline don't let me get casual in my commitment to Christ for these are critical times and at times like this I cannot afford to go through a form of godliness but I must be in due with that power from on high that is able to still destroy the yoke. Living critically or living casually in critical times. Go ahead and put those quotes up for me if you will tonight. We appear to lack interest in the life or death problems that these days appear to... to that, let me start over. Let me just start over. 
We appear to lack interest in the life or death problems these days and appear to lack the will to make the sacrifices that our safety costs for. Now, this is not a spiritual quote, but it kind of enlightens us on where we're at in the world. We seem to lack any other objective than that of making life easier and more enjoyable. We are dawning in the sea of we are drowning in the sea of complacency. We simply do not want to care. Well, I'll just stay out of their situation because if I start to care, then it may require me to do something about it. Can I tell you, as brothers and sisters of the Lord, we're supposed to bear the burdens one for another. We're supposed to care for those around us. I say, God, is it that we have become too casual in our living, that we don't even want to be concerned with the burden that our brother and our sister is carrying? I say, God, we're drowning in a sea of complacency. We simply do not want to care blindness and lethargy toward the threats posed by subversive organizations have reached dangerous portions in many areas. I don't need to go through the, the list of things that we're fighting as a world, but we are in critical times. Yeah. On every hand, whether it be home homebound stuff, whether it be situations in our own government, in our own in our own country, whether it be the world that we're fighting around us, I say, God, how can any Christian said idly by and say well it is what it is I've read the back of the book I know that we'll win but I've also read the scriptures where he said that they have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof I've read the scriptures when, when they carried the, the lamp and their lamp went out and at midnight or at the time of the hour when the bridegroom calleth they had no oil in their lamp and they had a form they had a look but they didn't make it and I say God let us realize I must not live too casual in the time that I live in in 2014 I must be about my father's business hallelujah go ahead for me where where is the spirit of sacrifice oh pastor it's going to cost me something oh it cost Jesus his life where is the spirit of sacrifice where is the spirit of dedication where is the spirit of commitment watch me back there where is the spirit of sacrifice the spirit of a, of a martyr one who will stand for right and one who will seal it with his own blood is a rarity today we talked about John the Baptist in the adult lesson this morning. John the Baptist, one, uh, well, he was different. Uh, he would be considered a, a, a wild thing, if you will. Uh, one that dressed a little differently than others dressed. Uh, one that ate that, uh, that locust and honey. And I forgot to give that to you when you left this morning. One that ate that locust and honey. And, and we, we talked about him, but we realized uh, that he was one that died for the cause of Christ. Uh, we realized that he was one that we would consider a martyr. Why? Because he stood for what was right and he was willing to seal it for his own with his own blood. Listen to what Meg Saint, a missionary, said, wrote in his wrote to his parents shortly before his martyrdom and said this I would rather die now than live a life of oblivious ease in a sick world. I would rather die now than to get so easy in what's going on around me that it not stir me anymore. I would rather die now than to be rocked to sleep and risk missing heaven. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but I believe it works well for where we're at tonight. In the, words, in the words of Isaiah, the whole head is sick and the whole heart is faint. The whole head is sick and the whole heart's faint. I said, God, have we ever lived in a time like we're in right now when it seems that the church, I don't mean our church specifically, I don't mean our denomination specifically, but if the shoe fit, fits, wear it. But I mean the church at large, when it seems that the entire church world is just sick we don't have the power we used to have we don't have the anointing that we used to have we don't have the deliverances and, and, the, and, and the salvations and, and the sanctifications and, and the miracles and the signs and the wonders and I say God could it be that we have just decided we're not going to sacrifice for anything anymore we'll just let things come and go as they, as, they, as they will and we'll say well we're better than the church down the road so we must be all right but I'll tell you, you won't be judged by the church down the road. 
You won't even be judged by the one you're sitting by. You won't be compared to what's happening over at Spirit Life or what's happening over at in Claremont or what's happening over in Winnegar. You will be judged by the most righteous judge there is. And I would hate for him to say, I never knew you. I would hate for him to say, I never knew you. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof oh where is that spirit of sacrifice what about was it Esther Esther that cried if I perish I perish having a desire to do what it takes having a desire that says I realize I'm not supposed to go in there I realize I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing I don't have an audience with the king I realize but, but, but my people are fixing to be annihilated and, 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 and if I stay I'm probably going to die but if I go in then there's a chance that I'll be able to make a difference so if I perish I perish I say God why don't we get that attitude back in the altars again why don't we get that attitude back in our homes again why don't dads be dads and moms be moms and children be children and why don't we get that attitude that the devil has taken enough from us and I'm going in I'm going to have a conversation with the Lord and I know that God will work it all out and we'll take the attitude like Esther did that if I die trying it'll still be okay if I perish I perish the Bible says woe unto them that are at ease in Zion but pastor it looked like it's going good well, for the most part, it is most of the time. Amen. There's days that are better than others, and there, there are situations that could be different, and that there are times that the gray hair seems to be more than others. But I say, God, I don't want to get at ease in Zion. I don't want to go through the motions. I don't want to go through programs. I don't want it to look like it's a false sense of security. I say, God, no. What brought us 59 years will take the same thing to get us another day, and that is people praying and fasting and seeking God and say, Lord, I. I will sacrifice my life if that's what it requires. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Go ahead for me. But thank God there is a remnant that will hold that will hold the faith until the end. There is a group of folks. Can I say it like this? I hope this is a true statement. There is a group of folks that attend the Okoe Church of God on a Sunday night in October located at 1105 North Lakewood that says we're here and we're going to be faithful until the end. We're here and we'll sacrifice whatever it takes to see the kingdom of God advanced in our community. We're here and I'm I'm going to hold to hold true to what's right and let go with what's wrong and I will be willing to die for what is right yeah. where is the spirit of sacrifice where is the spirit of sacrifice thank God that those that remain faithful are, are, are mentioned in the word of God we see time and time and time again where God will always have a remnant always have a remnant listen to what it says in chapter 52 verses 1 and 2 awake awake put on my strength O Zion put on thy beautiful garments O Jerusalem the holy city for henceforth there shall be no more coming to thee the uncircumcised and the unclean shake thyself from the dust arise and sit down O Jerusalem loose thyself from the bands of thy neck O captive daughter of Zion I say God I'm so thankful that no matter how bad it may seem to be no matter how dark it may seem to be getting there is still a remnant there is still those that the Lord will have his way with there are still those that says no matter what comes my way I'm going to be faithful I'm going to be dedicated I'm going to be committed I'm going to give God my everything I'm going to go to bed in love with Jesus I'm going to get up in love with Jesus and I'm going to live all day and say God allow me to be used by you to do exactly what you called me to do yeah. hallelujah that that remnant my cry to you out of the book uh, uh, chapter 60 verse 1 my cry to you arise shine for the light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee I say God let this location not just Ocoee but let this location be be a remnant let this location be one that doesn't give up in what's right let this location be one yes while we're reaching other people while we're doing things that we have never done to my knowledge and 
and 59 years of ministry while we've got things happening that we've never seen I said God don't let us water it down don't let us back it up don't let us get at ease in Zion Lord let us push forward let us stir ourselves let the anointing the power of God be our strength every single day that we live and I said God when I go to tell let somebody know that I'm from that church on the side of Lakewood that still believes in the power of God why arise shine in our life God the things that you have for us now number three we must be careful that we are not at ease in these critical times we must be careful that we are not at ease in these critical times in order to stir up our pure minds by way of remembrance let us look tonight at the word of the Lord let us look tonight at the things that's a big one to read hallelujah hallelujah you ready hallelujah it sounded good when I wrote all that amen but preaching from it sometimes is a little difficult hallelujah but understand this using the amplified version of our text that in the last days there will come or there will set in perilous times of great stress I think we're there can you say amen and trouble hard to deal with and hard to bear for people will be lovers of self and utterly self centered I said oh God we're there too uh, lovers of money and aroused by an inordinate or greedy desire for wealth proud and arrogant and contemptuous boasters and they will be abusive they will be blasphemous they will be scoffing they will be disobedient to parents and ungrateful unholy and profane they will be without natural human aff affection they will be callous and inhumane they will be rentless emitting of no truce or appeasement they will be slanderers false accusers troublemakers intemperate and, lo and, intemperate and loose in morals and conduct I say God all this is where we're at uncontrolled and fierce haters of God good they will be treacherous betrayers rash and inflated with self conceit they will be lovers of sensual pleasures and vain amusements more than and rather than lovers of God for although they hold a firm a form of piety or a form of true religion they deny and reject and are strangers to the power of it their conduct uh, belies the genuineness of their profession I said oh God I don't want to be guilty of that but I see it time and time and week in and week out service in service out church in and church out when we go through motions I say God I don't want to deny the genuineness of, of our profession avoid all such people turn away from them for among them are those who who for, for among them are those who warm their way into homes and, and captivate silly and weak uh, silly and weak natured and spiritual joy women loaded down with the birth burden of their sins and easily swayed and led away by various evil desires and seducive impulses I say God if that does not sum up where we're at in 20 and 14 if that does not sum up with what we're I know it's the word I know it's another version but it helps me understand some of the load that we should carry as men and women of God not to be at ease in Zion not to be rocked to sleep not to say well that's not my problem I'll let somebody else deal with it no my friend let us sacrifice one more time let us pray one more time let us get a hold of God one more time and God let us have a desire to be filled with your spirit hallelujah hallelujah at ease in these critical times we fail to realize that the end of all things is at hand oh pastor I've heard that all my life bless God I have too but I still believe it I'm almost 39 years old wow let me say I am 38 and a half and a few extra months and I've heard it all my life mom's taught it dad's taught it grandma's taught it granddaddy's taught it and they, they, Jesus is coming Jesus is coming the end is at hand and, uh, and I said Lord I, I've heard it my kids have heard it my wife has heard it you have heard it but I believe it. you have to just be crazy not to believe something's happening amen I'm not trying to scare you I'm not trying to, 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 to shock you into it but if it works I'll take it amen I'm trying to remind you that the word of God is real and we read that these times 
times we come and we see them at hand everywhere we go and I say Lord I know it's heavy I know it's hard I know folks are struggling but I have to look up for my redemption draweth nigh I have to remind myself I have to remind those that I shepherd over that the end of all things is at hand and you cannot afford to live at ease in these critical times hallelujah Hallelujah. Are you living at ease? Are you living a life of casualness in a critical time? I can't answer it for you. I can't. I'm not your judge. Oh, I can be your fruit inspector, but I'm not your judge. Are we, am I, living at ease, living a life of casualness Brother Jarman made a comment this week this, when we scheduled revival I'll confess to you now I didn't want it in October I wanted it the week of November blah 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 okay two weeks I gave him neither one of those weeks would work I said well call him and change it I did I said, this is Okoe. Can you call? And he said, I might could rearrange that. I said, would you call? I said, this would work better for us. Would you call and see if you could rearrange? He said, he called back and said, there's just no way. This one's already booked this to go with it. And it can't da 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 And I said, he said, how about the third week of November? I said, that won't work for me. I said, we're gone for two days. I said, we have staff events and we'll be out of school for two days and at conferences and I don't want to run to that all day long and I don't want to run home. And, and I said, I, I, want to be, I want to be there. I don't want to leave you by... He said, don't worry about me. I'm a big boy. I said, well, I don't want to leave you by yourself all day long. He said, well, I've got the week of October 5. As soon as he said it, I thought, oh, dear God, that's homecoming 2014. Uh, we're going to be wore out, but I, I want revival. I want him to come. I, I, I believe he can preach to our church. And I said, God, if that's what you want we'll make it it all worked out he came in he preached to us he stirred us up he reminded me that it's all going to be okay can you say amen he reminded me that we need to be filled with the spirit of God to keep down that flesh to keep down that Adam nature I say God I cannot afford to live casual in the times that I live in today hallelujah are you dilatory are you dilatory about your church responsibilities are you faithful are you faithful? Are you committed? When it's time to be at church, are you here? Oh, are you in Sunday school at 10 o'clock? And everybody said amen. amen. <laughs> I'll get the attendance report in the morning from the office. Are you faithful in your giving? Faithful in your tithing? Faithful in your, in your pledges? Faithful in your prayer time are you faithful in church events are you if you're supposed to mow the grass be the best mow, grass mower you can be if you're supposed to clean the glass windows are you faithful are you supposed to put out the right color of boxes we got different colors up here tonight <laughs> sister Wendy's tried to tell them put the same colors up there it, it, it throws us off it throws us off we'll have to fix that amen we got are you faithful are you faithful? Are you diligent? Are you diligent? I won't call who it is, but I got a text from a teacher this morning. Sunday school starts at 10 o'clock. I taught Sunday school this morning. I taught John the Baptist. Pastor Ricky preached. And uh, I didn't get this text message till after church. The text message I got right at 10 o'clock thereabouts was, we're running late, we're on the way, we'll be there in just a moment. I responded after church, okay, see you then, or something like that. It was way after church. Why? Because they took their responsibility sincere. I know things happen. I mean, I drive 3.3 miles to get here too. I Believe me, I know things happen. I leave and they're about ready to walk out the door and 15 minutes later, where are y'all at? We're coming, you know. How long does it take to get out of the house? Well, you, the, the two-year-old mom with three kids, you don't know, I guess. Are you dilatory? Are you, are you faithful? When I look out on the pew that you're supposed to be at on Wednesday nights and Sunday nights and Sunday mornings, are you there? Are you there? And if you're not there, do, do we know why you're not there? Pastor, i got to report into you every time I miss church. No, you don't have to. It sure is nice to know when you're not here, though. Right. I mean, I, I know some would be out today. 
Some people leave and you hear from them for a week of Sundays and then they show back up like everything's fine. Bless God, but we prayed for you while you were gone. Are you, are you diligent? Are you dilatory? Go ahead. Have you been unfaithful in your stewardship? Talking about living casually in critical times. Are you, have you been unfaithful in your stewardship? You can make it up. You can take care of it tonight. We can get back on the right track. God's done too much for me to live casually. Right. God's blessed me too much to live cash. I get in that vehicle every morning. I crank that truck up. I pray to God it gets me from where I'm going to where I'm at to where I'm going. Why? Because it's not my vehicle. It's his vehicle. Amen. That extra car we got, that but we call it the bug. The bug's not mine. It belongs to me and Cherry supposedly on paper, but it belongs to the Lord. I pray God keep on safe. Brother Jarman rode with us to Pizza Hut Friday night. I believe his life flashed before his eyes. <laughs> Have you been unfaithful in your stewardship? Now, I don't mean just your tithe and offering, but are, are, are you faithful in the resources that you have? I didn't say she was a bad driver. I didn't say it was her fault. I just said his life flashed be before his eyes. Could have been the other driver we were having to deal with on Highway 50 at 930 at night, okay? Are, are, are you a good steward? Are you a good steward? When I go to your house, do we see good stewardship practices in place? Something I teach the kids here on campus. When you go to the bathroom and you wash your hands. And thank God they're supposed to know to wash their hands. After they potty. When they do the paper towel. They don't need 15 things of the paper towel. That's too much. I tell them three. I think they probably need about four. Because sometimes they don't do a full. Wow. Good, good. You got to be good stewards of what we have. God, have we been faithful in the things that you've given us? Have we, ha, have we failed to carry a burden for lost men and lost women? Well, Pastor, I, I could shout with you about being faithful to church and being good stewards and, and being faithful and all. But now, Pastor, it's been a long time since I prayed somebody through the salvation. Shame on you. We come in contact with people all the time that need Jesus. And what about it? You know how I feel about Walmart. But what about it if I'm at Walmart, somebody needs prayer, somebody needs to be led to, am I willing to carry a burden for the lost? Am I willing to get out of the casualness of life that we live and say, God, not my desire, but your desire. Go ahead for me, buddy. Living casually in critical times. Have you lived for yourself? Have you lived selfishly and are you neglecting the family of God? You're my brother and my sister. I'm supposed to be your brother. We've come too far together to give up on each other now. I say, God, we have to be ones that bind together, love the lost, be good stewards, be that remnant that you've called us to be, be the faithful ones, be willing to take the gospel message of Jesus outside of these four walls. And we can't do that if we are only living for ourselves. It's all about me. It's all about me. No, it ain't either. Come on. No, it ain't. It's supposed to be about Him. If it's about Him, everything... Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, His righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto you. If you have, it's time that we awake. It's time that we realize where we're at. For this day could bring the coming of the Lord of glory. This could be the day that we read about. For the trump of the Lord will sound, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to me. I said, Lord, it could be this hour. I can never make it to Monday morning I can never make it back home tonight but if I'm living too casual I won't hear the sound of the trumpet if I'm living too casual I won't know when he summons for my call if I'm living too casual then I won't be ready when the bridegroom cometh I say Lord stir me up one more time stir me up one more time how and how could you meet your God with your hands empty what have you done for the Lord? Well, Lord, I don't have anything to offer you. Well, why not? I gave you my son. And you couldn't give me a little bit of time and energy and 
effort and stewardship and faithfulness and a burden for the Lord. You couldn't, how could we ever meet our God with our hands empty? Say, God, I want to be busy for you. I want, I want to be busy doing the things that you've called me to do. And that means I cannot live casually in critical times. I refuse to live casually. I don't let my kids live. Now, we have days that we kind of just let our hair down for a few moments. Go ahead, baby. We have time that we... I was going to get up yesterday morning and... My goal was to get down, take care of all the Sam's run before I picked the preacher up at 9 o'clock. That did not happen. I laid before the Lord yesterday morning until 8 o'clock, okay? I just wore out, physically just drained. So I understand there's times you've got to disconnect. And soon and very soon, we're, we're probably going to, going to just take a Sunday and we're going to just disappear. We'll, we'll be in church, but I just feel I need to go and recharge. I've got to get through some things and, and I just I feel the weight. I feel the load. I feel the, the stress. And I'm not complaining. I, man, I love it. Load it all up me. But I'm learning as I get older that it's good to just take some time and disconnect and recharge. And I hope you'll let me do that for maybe one weekend here before the end of the year just to recharge and get everything back in line. And I say, God, I understand we have to do that, but I can't do that every Every day of my life. I can't do that every service. I, 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 I can't come in and say, well, it's 559. I guess we'll start. No, let's get here and let's be, let's be serious about church. Let's get what we need. Let's let the Lord minister to us. That way when I walk out that door, I can have a burden for the lost. I can, I can get out of this, this casualness that we find ourselves in. And I say, God, it's too critical. The times are too bad. The season is almost done for me to kind of go through the motions. Lord, stir me up one more time. Lord, revive me one more time. Lord, help me one more time to realize it's in you that we live and we move and we have our being. Lord and if it was not for you I would not even be here at all tonight stand with me every head bowed every eye closed Heavenly Father I've done my very best tonight not a new scripture ones that no doubt this congregation has read time and time and time again but God I ask myself tonight as I allow them to eavesdrop into my conversation with you Lord am I living too casually Lord am I living too casually is our church too casual is our commitment too casual is our faithfulness too casual God if it is tonight stir us up one more time stir us up God Get us out of the sleep, Lord, that we're in. And let us realize that these are critical times and we need you tonight. Help us, Lord, in all that we do. We will forever be grateful for it. Simple altar call tonight that I believe will affect everybody on this, in this building tonight. If you don't want to live casually, we're going to start tonight by finding us a place to pray. And say, God, stir it up. Now, if you've been living casually, you come down with the rest of them and you ask God to deal with your heart. Would you come tonight? Let's gather around this altar. Let's gather around this altar tonight. Ask the Lord to stir us up. Ask the Lord to help us one more time that we will be used by Him for great things in the kingdom of God. Lord, I love you tonight. Lord, I love you tonight. Don't let me live casual. Don't let me go through motions. Help me tonight, Jesus. Help me tonight. Come on, church. Cry out to him, church. Lord, stir us up. Speak the word, Lord. My ears long to hear you. Speak the word, Lord. My heart aches to know. Speak the word, Lord. I'll be one. You have me to. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Cry out to him tonight. Speak the word, Lord, your servant will. Come on, young people. Come on, young people. Call out to him tonight, Lord. God, I need you. 
Come on, moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas. Cry out to him tonight. There's been times that I've complained as I've rubbed against the grain. And I recall those times you took me to my knees. There's one thing I couldn't do, and so I owe this thanks to you. I don't want to go one more day without your all-consuming passion inside of me. I don't want to spend my whole life asking, what if I'd given everything? 
instead of going through the motions I don't want to go through the motions I don't want to go one more day without your all-consuming passion inside of me I don't want to spend my whole life asking what if I'd given everything instead of going through the motions. This might hurt, it's not safe. But I know that I've got to make a change I don't care if I break At least I'll be feeling something Cause just okay is not enough Help me fight through the nothingness of this life I don't want to go through the motions I don't want to go one more day without your all-consuming passion inside of me. I don't want to spend my whole life asking, what if I'd given everything instead of going through the motions? I don't want to go through the motions. I don't want to go one more day without your all-consuming passion inside of me. I don't want to spend my whole life asking, what if I'd given everything instead of going through the motions? No regrets, not this time. Gonna let my heart defeat my mind Let your love make me whole I think I'm finally feeling something Just okay is not enough Help me fight through the nothingness of this life I don't want to go through the motions I don't want to go one more day without your all-consuming passion inside of me. I don't want to spend my whole life asking, what if I had given everything instead of going through the motions? I don't want to go through the motions. I don't want to go one more day without your all-consuming passion inside of me. I don't want to spend my whole life asking, what if I had given everything instead of going through the motions? I don't want to go through the motions. I don't want to go one more day without your all-consuming passion inside of me. I don't want to spend my whole life asking, what if I had given everything instead of going through the motions? I don't want to go through the motions. I don't want to go one more day without your all-consuming passion inside of me. I don't want to spend my whole life asking, what if I had given everything instead of going through the motions? I don't want to go through the motions. I don't want to go one more day without your all-consuming passion inside of me. I don't want to spend my whole life asking, what if I'd given everything instead of going through the
to go through the motions. I don't want to go one more day without your all-consuming passion inside of me. I don't want to spend my whole life asking, what if I had given everything instead of going through the I don't want to go through the motions. I don't want to spend one more day without your all consuming passion inside of me. I don't want to spend my whole life asking, what if I had given everything instead of going through the motions? I don't want to go through the motions. I don't want to go one more day without your all-consuming passion inside of me. I don't want to spend my whole life asking, what if I had given everything instead of going through the motions? I ask is to be like him all through life's journey from earth to glory that's all I ask is to be like him, to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, that's all I ask, is to be like him, all through life's journey from earth to glory hallelujah that's all I ask is to be oh would you sing it again tonight sing it to the Lord to be like Jesus to be like Jesus, that's all I ask, is to be like Him, all through life's journey, from earth to glory. That's all I ask is to be like Him. Oh, lift your hands. Make it a prayer tonight. Let's sing it to Him. To be like Jesus. Lord, with our hands lifted tonight, we ask You to help. Oh, yes, Lord. That's all I ask is to be like Him all through life's journey from earth to glory that's all I ask is to be like 
I give to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, that's all I ask, is to be like Him all through life's journey from earth to glory that's all I ask is to be like Him Father we love you tonight thank you Lord for your assurance Thank you, Lord, for that anointing. Thank you, Lord, that I do not have to live casual in times of criticalness. Lord, I can follow after you. Lord, I can be led by your Spirit. Lord, I can do the things that you've called me to do. Lord, and I pray tonight as we leave this house that we leave not your presence, but let your presence go with us. Let it speak to us this week. Lord, let it remind us of the times that we're living in. And let us be busy doing the things that we're supposed to be doing for you. Lord, it will forever be grateful for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said amen. Hallelujah. Before you leave tonight,